What about the ferry wars? That was one of the most recent crises you had on the island. Yeah, although it was more pri a private business crisis. It really, I mean, uh, basically the Arnold Line, which had served the Straits for, uh, since 1878, was sold. Um, and actually, I represented um, in my law lobbying capacity the, the, the buyers of the Arnold Line. But the Arnold Line did some, purchasers did some very foolish things in terms of financing their purchase, and they quickly ran into huge problems resulting in their being essentially foreclosed on by their uh, note holders. And when it was all said and done, uh, our line basically went out of business, uh, but we were very concerned about the impact of all of that. And indeed, that event of our line going out of business has greatly uh, changed the shape of downtown Mackinac Island because, because uh, uh, prior to that, the great bulk of passengers arrived in the uh, downtown uh, toward Marquette Park. Now the whole scale has been tilted, so most people arrive actually at the end toward the Village Inn, which has certain right. positive things. But <laughs> but but it, resu it resulted in sort of changing the traffic flow. It it resulted in in buildings that had not been on the market being sold and being redeveloped or developed from the ground up. And so it had a major impact on the island. Yeah. And its reverberations are still felt, but there wasn't much that the commission could do. And, and by that time, I was off the commission, by the way. Uh, but it was a major event on the island, but nothing that we could do from a governmental standpoint. So Starline and Shepler are the only two ferries right now. That's correct. Arnold is kaput. Except they still maintain a freight business. Oh, okay. Although even it's diminished in size and scope. Okay, when you look at Mackinac Island today compared to the halcyon years of the 1950s when you first started working there, how do you see the island today? Do you think it's in better shape? Uh, things are going better? Uh, overall, um, after all these years, half a century later? Yes, I, I think, you know, a lot of people, when these new buildings go up or there are changes in the island, a lot of people, oh, they, they moan and say, well, the place is, the character is changing, etc. Well, to a certain extent, that's true. However, basically, the island has never been in better shape. Um, the local government is much more sophisticated than it ever was. There, there are uh, regulations and rules in place that, 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 that protect it much more than in the past. And I was instrumental, I think, it's fair to say, in convincing the city council, because those things were under the jurisdiction of the council, to adopt them. For example, we have a sign ordinance, which we didn't have before. We have now historic districts preservation districts, which we didn't have before. Although I will say, it's something of a mixed blessing there. And we have building regulations that we never had before. And the, the properties are much better cared for than they ever were before. And so if, if you would look at Mackinac Island now as compared to what it was when I first came there in the 60s, the physical shape of it is much better. Yes, there, there are some aspects that have been lost. I, I, don't, I don't deny that. But overall, the community is better protected and it can offer better services and is safer. We have far better fire protection than we ever had before. And you know, we've had a, a mayor there. She's, she's been mayor, Margaret Dowd, for over 40 years. Uh, she's overseen a lot of very progressive changes. So there's much to be much to be said in a positive sense. Is the tourist uh, flow into the island the same as it was back in the 50s? Larger, smaller? Has there been well, an ebb and flow over yeah, the years? Yeah, th that's an interesting question. And there has been an ebb and flow to some extent. We, we had some leaner years uh, in uh, when you wouldn't think we would have had them, maybe, in, um, say, uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Our, our biggest year ever probably was the centennial, bicentennial year of 1976, by actual count. Then we went into something of a swoon, and now we're back pretty well. But one of the interesting things to contemplate is the effect that the Indian casinos have had on leisure time spending. Oh, okay. I think a lot of people don't realize what a huge impact that has had. That has taken a lot of discretionary money away from places like Mackinac Island, in my opinion. Interesting. And, and has shifted it elsewhere. 
so that um, uh, the casinos, as far as the island, looking at it narrowly is concerned, I think we're very much of a, a mixed blessing. But the traffic is good. We've had, we've had good years. Our hotels have never done better than they have the last few years. So, you know, the, the, the prospects are bright. How about the Village Inn? What's happening with the Village Inn now? Well, uh, the Village Inn uh, is doing well uh, for uh, uh, the last six years. Grand Hotel uh, leased uh, it, the business from us. Uh, they are going to concentrate on their own properties going forward. So uh, uh, it's a new and I think you know, basically a very good chapter that the Village Inn is entering into. We had a very positive relationship with Grand Hotel and the relationship you know, has has ended, but on very positive terms, and uh, so we we all look forward to. So a good you're time. resuming your active involvement well, in not, the village. Gonna you're going to be in there. I'm not going to be in the kitchen polishing washing. glasses. No, and probably not. But we'll have some good people who'll do that. But uh, <laughs> but the old layer between us, right? You know, which was taken care of by Grand Hotel, for example, yeah. and before that, another local person, Ron Dufinaw, You know that that was removed. Uh, the Grand Hotel itself is such an iconic building, and it has such a grand and glorious history all by itself, independent of anything else almost in the island. Do you feel its prominence on the island is, let's say, proportionately greater today than it was, let's say, back after World War II or in the early years of the 20th century, or not as much? Is, have other things built up uh, around it? Uh, the infrastructure on the island, entertainment, tourists, mm -hmm. down on Main Street and elsewhere, to the point where maybe the Grand isn't quite as dominant? What, what do you, how do you look at it? Well, I would say this. You know, I, I have known uh, uh, the past three operators. First was W. Stewart Woodville, right. who was the uncle of Dan Musser, Jr., who is the father of Dan Musser III, who is now, you know, right. the CEO. Right. Uh, Grand Hotel has always been very important to the island, and the relationship between Grand Hotel and the local community has always been very positive. The Mussers in particular, senior and junior, have always worked very hard to be, to show their appreciation for the community. For example, every year they have a, an appreciation night all the firemen, all the policemen, all the street suite, everyone's invited who has contributed anything to the island. And, and so the uh, Musser family has always been very, very uh, uh, generous in supporting the community. Um, so, you know, I don't think they're any more dominant or less dominant, but they are certainly very supportive of that community. And, uh, and uh, I, uh, I know the community appreciates that. Which reminds me that one of the things that I, that I was able to do for the island, by the way, sort of in connection with this, we now have a very good health system on the island. We're affiliated with Mackinac Straits Hospital in St. Ignace, which has become a very good rural hospital. One of the things that I was able to do uh, after I left the legislature and was in the law lobbying field was to convince Tommy Thompson, the U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, to designate the Mackinac Island facility with a special designation that no other rural hospital got. And the result was increased federal funds to this day to that facility. And so that's very important. Amazing. One last question about Mackinac Island, and that is telephone rates. <laughs> that was a big controversy. Yes, that was for something we were what able happened to, on that? That was something we were able to accomplish for the island also. Uh, uh, Every time you picked up a phone and called St. Ignace or Mackinac City, you were paying a toll. Well, particularly in the case of St. Ignace, which is really, is, is really has a close relationship and always has had with the island, that was very uh, burdensome and, and troublesome. So I did uh, go to the Public Service Commission and put some pressure on uh, AT&T uh, and the result is that uh, at least St. Ignace is no longer a, a, a toll call. And that saved, you know, saved people a lot of money and, and just made you know, the connection with St. Ignace that much uh, stronger. You know, a lot of people, they, in their mind's eye, think of Mackinac City you know, and maybe Mackinac Island, but there's never been a very strong relationship. But St. Ignace community and Mackinac Island community has always been a very strong relationship. Interesting. Uh, yeah, a lot of loyalty back and forth. Right. Okay, so um, 
at this point, how much time are you spending in a year, let's say, uh, on Mackinac Island compared to downstate in East Lansing, where I think you've lived over the years? Or do you ever get back to Manistee? Are there any Cawthorns <laughs> left over there? I mean, what, what's going on? I have uh, only a handful, or well, less than a handful, of re living relatives in Manistee, the Manistee area, which is too bad because, as you say, our families on both sides went back to the 1880s when my mother's family came from Berlin and my father's family came from uh, Indiana via all sorts of places <laughs> and, and ultimately England. Yeah. Um, uh, I spend uh, uh, nearly all my time from uh, late May to late October uh, on the island. Uh, you know, I enjoy living there. I, I enjoy our, our home, which is just a great place. It's humble, but it's a very, very nice place. And uh, the rest of the time I'm in East Lansing, although I do like to travel, and I've tried, as I say, I've traveled a lot in the past. I've been on every continent except Antarctica, and I have no desire to go to Antarctica, by the way. Um, and so I love to travel, and we, and we do a lot of that. And as far as the business, it's in the hands of our younger people. We have no ownership interests anymore, although they kindly provide me with a desk and a telephone and even a computer, which I occasionally use. So you're down here in well, the office when you're ensconced in East Lansing correct. in your home most That's of the correct. time. Well, listen, Dennis Cawthorn, I want to thank you very much for a tremendous interview. Thank uh, you. Fantastic career. Uh, we've covered, hopefully, the waterfront, a little bit of everything. If there's anything else you want to get out right now, now's your chance. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much. I can't think of anything further, and I appreciate all the friendship of so many people. I appreciate the good work of the Michigan Political History Society, and, uh, and you've been a great interviewer, and we've had a great relationship over the years, and I hope it continues for a long time to come. It will. Good.